TalkTainmentRadio.com. We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or KE World Network, LLC. Live call in talk show. Dial 1 877 932 9766 and join the conversation here on TalkTainmentRadio.com. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Filler and exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio the way it should be heard. And now, Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are all over the planet. Welcome to this edition of the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby. We go where you go on the world's greatest radio. That's TopTedio.com. And it's also radio the way it should be heard. Mr. Fuller is the author of the book, The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. And he will be discussing that and answering your questions and gmails on this program today. This program is going to be entitled Lying. That is Lying in the system of racism and white supremacy and we'll have Mr. Fuller address that. Although you can call in and ask any question you want to and he will uh, answer those questions too. We want to say uh, hello to our uh, some of our reoccurring sponsors Brian Gaston, Eric Williams, BW Gifts down in Houston, Texas, Helen Nance, Don Mitchener, and LaShawn King. Those are loyal listeners to the program, and we do thank you for doing that. And speaking about that, um, listening to the program, this is one thing that uh, you can do, if I can get my notes together, is simply this. Um, You can look at and view the program, the live broadcast of today's show, by going to YouTube, then type in the word Talktainment, then hit the space bar and type in the word radio. Scroll down to talk team at number two live on YouTube. And then you're de- and then you are there. And while you are there, hit the like button and subscribe button. You can also call us at 1-877-932-9766. Or you can Gmail me at seven, the numeral seven, Mr. Bobby at gmail.com. And I will try to read those. And if you miss any of today's program, you can go to facebook.com forward slash talktainment and you can hear the whole program there. Okay, with that out the way, let's say this. Mr. Fuller, uh, first of all, good morning and how are you this morning? Good morning. I'm still learning. Okay. A lot has happened uh, in the uh, news uh, here in this country. Uh, I was wondering... What are some of your thoughts, or what did you deem some newsworthy things that you would like to hit on before we get into lying in the system of racism, which is white supremacy? I can barely hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, I, repeating, I said, what are some of the things, since this has been in a news cycle since the last we spoke, that have stood out to you that you would like to address? Well, nothing in particular, but uh, there have been a lot in the news, so I could address anything that's going on uh, according to the code. Oh, yes. Which is where I always use as my base for making judgments mm-hmm. uh, based on logic, hopefully. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I left my one paper out, out in the car, but maybe during the break I can get that. Um, there's been something that has come up in the news a lot of people have been talking about it. They're still talking about it. As I left home this morning, they were still talking about uh, President Trump's uh, address to uh, the, uh, I guess, a meeting in the White House. There were seven people in the meeting that he was having in the White House, and he used some very strong language uh, in that um, 
meeting that he had and uh, I think it was something about uh, Haiti and the African nations uh, being asshole that was a I'm not going to say the word I don't know if I'm, I'm not am I permitted to say the word this time Ed am I permitted to say the word that Trump used his words Okay, well, okay, I'm not really sure if I'm permitted to say the word, but he used the word assholes describing the nations, and it was sort of, a, well, it was kind and a lot of uproar and an insult to Haitians and a lot of African nations. A lot of the African nations were and are demanding an apology. If you have heard the news, what are your thoughts on that, Mr. Fuller? Well, uh, I don't know exactly what Mr. Trump said. I know what he is reported to have said. Uh, by some people, and then and other people said that these remarks were not made, but um, it had to do, I mostly, because the code requirements uh, require me, first of all, if somebody makes a statement, to not center on who's making it, center on whether the statement is true, and what the statement means, and whether or not it should be true. And there's a lot of questions that come up from that. Now, always go with the truth, whatever the truth is. So, first of all, in order to find out the truth, the mechanics of language means that you define what you're talking about. That's the, that's the best way to communicate uh, according to the compensatory code and the court. That should be based on logic, the logic of the universe. Be clear. Be focused. If you're making a statement, be sure that everybody that you're talking to, or you intend to talk to, understands exactly what it is you're saying. And then, later on, maybe, explain why you're saying it. And should it, should it be said? Okay? So, the terms that I heard being used, I don't know exactly what they're supposed to mean, because that was not explained in anything that I heard about, uh, that's a slang term, I guess. Uh, I mean, uh, talking about countries and then using that type of language to, de you know, to describe a country or a continent, an entire continent uh, of countries, or whatever that's supposed to mean. And I don't know if they're talking about the people there or the animals there or the bees and birds there or what. I mean, that's not made clear. See, so if you go in, you know, anytime people make statements, they should be ready to go into details about exactly what they mean. I mean, in fine detail, and go over and over again to make sure that there's not, what, confusion and misunderstanding. Make yourself clear, and then go from there. And then, then you have questions after that saying, whatever it is that you're saying, it is, is it a criticism? And should it be a criticism? Then you find out uh, whether the what you're saying, you definitely have to find out which, whether what you're saying is true or false. All right? And then you ask, should it be true? And then you ask, should it be this way or should it be some other way? Or whatever you're talking about. Because every situation should be in existence or shouldn't be in existence. And so if you say it shouldn't be in existence, then say why it does exist and what it takes to see to it that that situation doesn't exist. That's if you're in the business of problem solving. If you're not trying to make a problem worse than it already is. So like I said, I don't have definitions for some of the terms being used. So I'll have to make conjectures, I guess, about some de definitions, come to some conclusions, one uh, word that I heard used is uh, immigrants. And uh, other terms I'm somewhat familiar with, rapists, murderers, disease spreaders. Uh, I heard about that in connection with people who are immigrants. And, uh, and that some of these people come from uh, the type of language that they use to describe like 
what I understand, countries are continents, or countries in continents, <clears throat> and uh, the equivalent of what you might call toilet countries, I guess. All right? Now, what, is, what exactly is a toilet country? What constitutes a toilet country? All right? Uh, a, a waste country. Are the people waste? Are the animals waste? Are the mountains and trees? Is that a bunch of waste? Uh, what are we talking about? Something, you know, uh, you're talking about waste, I guess. So these questions should be asked. See, when people are sitting, you know, when people are having a talk and it is serious, when you use slang terms, which is okay, people, in the, according to the code, a book that I've written, I say people should avoid slangs altogether when they're talking serious business because there may be some miscommunication. So if you're going to use slang terms, meaning what do you mean by slang terms? It means terms that are usually not used to describe what it is that you're talking about, usually not used. So if you come up with a new term to describe something, you should be able to take that slang term and say exactly what you mean and mean exactly what you say. Now, I have uh, written up something that I thought, these were my thoughts on immigrants and so-called toilet countries. I have mm. that in parentheses. Okay. And rapists and murderers and disease spreaders. Now, I'm, I'm not familiar with the, uh, what you call the asshole countries, but I guess you mean toilet by asshole. Uh, I am familiar with the term somewhat of immigrants, however, that's a vague term too. Uh, rapists, murderers, disease spreaders, I'm familiar with those terms, and I think most people are. So, I have written up something here, I was thinking about this when I was hearing all this on the radio, mm -hmm. and looking at it on television, and reading about it in the newspapers, and uh, I was thinking, according to some reports, over 2,000 years ago, a mother became pregnant under very mysterious and possibly illegal circumstances. Now, that's what some people have told me. A lot of people have told me this in different buildings that I've gone to. According to some reports, over 2,000 years ago, a mother became pregnant. This mother became pregnant under very mysterious and possibly illegal circumstances. What was, whatever was legal at that time, I don't know what the laws were. While immigrating to a place where, and here's that word immigrating, that mother was immigrating to a place where were possibly many others who were immigrants. Yes. All right? Now, she was pregnant <laughs> during that time, so the reports that I have heard down through the years, I've heard the same story over and over again. All right, in fact, we just had a holiday that had something to do with that story called Christmas. Okay, now that mother gave birth to a baby boy, according to the reports that I've heard down through the years. And that baby boy was born not in a five-star hotel, but reportedly under what could be considered very unsanitary, toilet-like conditions. Correct. Have you heard that story? Is anybody? Yes, know? sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard a story like that. A pregnant mother immigrated to a place and couldn't find a decent place to stay, I understand, wound up among a bunch of horses and cows, I guess, and sheep and goats in what could be called toilet-like condition. <clears throat> yes, sir. Gave birth to a baby, not in a five-star hotel, but under these conditions, very unsanitary, toilet-like conditions, a place where animals were kept. And I heard that story. I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, a lot of people say it is. Millions of people, billions of people over a period of time. That baby grew up among very powerful people who regarded that baby as being just another wandering, inferior troublemaker, if that story is correct. 
Have you heard that story? Yes, sir. Okay. They hung that baby along with a couple of thieves. All right? This immigrant baby born under toilet-like conditions. That toilet-like born immigrant is often regarded by many millions right this minute as being the very best person that ever existed. Now, I'm either telling the truth or I'm telling the falsehood, but I'm just telling what I heard. I wasn't there. Yes, sir. But right now, I see a whole bunch of buildings on a whole lot of corners and all up and down blocks everywhere, everywhere, where people go in these buildings every Sunday and sometimes all week long and talk about a baby boy born 2,000 years ago who was born as an immigrant under toilet-like conditions. All right, if you're going to start condemning people who are born in toilet-like conditions, see, this is where I'm going with this. Yes, sir. All right, now what are you going to say about that chap, about that person? Okay, but let me continue. Millions of people who reside in huts, in mansions, in castles, and in entire holy cities worship the very mention of that little boy's name. Millions of houses are built where people go to talk about him and to tell each other that they are waiting for him to immigrate to where they are. Have you heard that? Yes, sir. Yeah, I've heard that. That people say that, well, he left here, he immigrated, you know, a long ways from here, but he's going to immigrate back one of these days. And, you know, these are millions of people in this area of the world where all these politicians are who are talking about people who are born in huts and, you know, and, and, and who reside in huts under toilet-like conditions and who are, you know, unwanted immigrants. Well, that immigrant was hung. He wasn't wanted. I mean, hey, they did a job on him. So I've heard. I wasn't there. I'm just talking about what I've heard. Yes, sir. All right. Many of the people during the waiting never call themselves immigrants or the children of immigrants. They call themselves what? Discover people. Explorers. I'm talking about some of these people who are doing all this talking about immigrants. What did they call themselves when they start traveling? They call themselves discovery people. Explorers, pioneers, travelers, settlers, <coughs> trailblazers, homesteaders, and sometimes they capped it off with a term called God's civil servants, or something equivalent to all. Now these same people, these so-called immigrants, who came across oceans and whatnot and met other people, they immigrated. And as they immigrated, they prayed. They prayed. They actually prayed. According to what they said, they also did something else among the people whom they encountered. Now, these are immigrants now, but they encountered people who were already where they went. And when they encountered these people, according to the reports, they lied. They cheated, they stole, robbed, raped, poisoned, spread diseases, murdered. They immigrated to many, many places and enslaved millions and millions of people as they went. Now, these are some immigrants now. I mean, when you travel that kind of distance and pick up a whole boatload of slaves, you are some kind of immigrant, all right? Chaining, assaulting, corrupting, selling these slaves, trading them, forcing them to do what? Immigrate. I'm talking about this word immigration now. Yes, sir. You get a boatload of people and put them on there with chains, naked, pile them up, 
take them across great oceans, you're causing those people to do what? Immigrate. And they didn't even want to immigrate. But this is according to what I've heard. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I've heard this. I've heard a lot of stories like that. Okay? Let me continue. The people who did these things are regarded by many as being the most powerful and the most terrifying of all of the so-called immigrants in recorded history. Many of them brag about having that history. Many of them seek to continue making that sort of history right here in 2018. That's obvious. Who are these people? To many of the people of planet Earth, these master immigrant terrorists are called what? White supremacists. And are racist men and racist women collectively or individually. Now, these people, immigrants, master immigrants, they, most of the time, do not call themselves by these titles. Not the title of white supremacists. They say that they're not that. Even though the record shows that that's what they practice. But for purposes of deception, they call themselves by whatever titles help them to maintain and or expand their master criminal power over the non-white people of the known universe. Now, these are just from some notes that I took, mm -hmm. just thinking about what you said we're talking about and what has been in the news. We're talking about immigrants and people who came from toilet-like conditions. And I started off talking about a baby boy that people in this area of the world where they had a lot of slaves and whatnot, they got a lot of places called churches. We talk about a baby boy that was considered to be unwanted in a lot of places where he went because people didn't like the things he was saying. And they, didn't, they talked about the conditions he came from and that he was an immigrant, a troublemaker, a wanderer, going from place to place. I heard a story, uh, you know, long years ago about he went and found some fishermen and told them to drop their nets and follow him. Now, I sure, I'm quite sure when the supervisor came around and saw them nets laying around and nobody around catching no fish, he went off. He said, who, who is this troublemaker? He's getting my people to walk off the job. And say so he's going to have them be, what, some fishermen of men. Not catching fish from the sea. Got another job for them. And took my workers. Now, I don't, you know, hey, I'm going to talk to the, the, the head of government and see what we can do about this turkey. All right? Now, that's the story I heard. Yes, sir. Okay? So, the, what is the point that I'm making? People should be careful about talking about immigrants and coming from toilet-like conditions. Because they just might be talking about somebody that they worship. Hmm. You know, and spend a whole lot of money doing it. Yes, sir. Okay? All kinds of cathedrals and whatnot. I mean, you know, talking about something that they, somebody that they not only worship, but they're waiting on them. They're waiting on that person to immigrate back. I mean, from a long ways. Mm -hmm. From what I've heard. Okay. All I right. hope that somebody gets my point. Okay. TalkTimeAtRadio.com is a 24-7, no-charge, worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on various topics, such as news and lifestyle, sports, law, health, wellness, religion, and politics. Now, here's a couple that I'd like to share with you. Pastor O speaks, and it's your time to travel. Now, these shows, these two shows are exclusive to TalkTainmentRadio.com. You can only hear these shows right here. So all you have to do is to go to the TalkTainmentRadio.com homepage, click on Programs, 
and there you will find it's your time to travel and Pastor O speaks. Yes, right there. And while you're there, you can hit the, uh, I think there's a like button there for all the Talktainment programs, and there's also a donate button there just above the uh, the phone number. So all these shows, again, are for TalkTainmentRadio.com. That's radio the way it should be heard. Hello, my name is Mr. Bobby, and I am the co-host of The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Today's topic is lying, and we're going to be get more into that. You can contact the show by calling 1-877-932-9766. You can gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. You can also go to Fake, or rather go to, yeah, you can go to Facebook, but right now you can go to YouTube and view the program live. All you have to do is um, type in uh, the word talktainment, then hit the space bar and the word radio. Scroll down to talktainment number two, live on YouTube. Just as simple as that. And while you're there, hit the like and subscribe button, and you are all in. And also, if you'd like to hear the day's program in its entirety you can also go to facebook.com forward slash talk and you are in there okay uh this uh this is breaking news uh the department of homeland security announces a six month extension to the immigrants six months extension to the immigrants, I think this has to do with DACA. I'm not familiar with all that, but I know that some people I've seen on the news that some people were going to have to leave, but now they're going to have a six-month extension to that. Mr. Fuller, as we speak about lying in the very few moments we have before we have to go to a break here, in that room where the president was, there were seven people. And four of the seven people said that he said exactly what he said. Two said that they were there, but they didn't hear it. One just abstained, and I think another one uh, said that he said what he said to the president. He said it in private. But Dick Durbin came out and said exactly that the president did say those asshole comments. And, of course, the president said that he didn't say it, which brought is bringing forth confusion. Tom Cotton and another one, I think Purdue, said that they were in the room, but they didn't hear that. What say you to a situation like that that is bringing that type of confusion into the situation? Well, uh, you know, people say that people say things, and then other people say it wasn't said, so I wasn't there. But that's why I said what I said, a few minutes ago, all of that that I said, because I get right to the subject matter, you know, not whether somebody said it or didn't say it. I'm not even very much interested in that, because people do, you know, when you have a confusing subject, but you use confusing language, I guess people can get confused, and everybody's saying a little of everything, and, you know, some people not paying attention to what's being said, other people paying attention to what's being said and not understanding what's being said. Other people listening and understanding and reporting. So, like I said, I wasn't there. So, I just, you know, the code requires me to seek logic about the subject matter. So, I, so I went straight to the subject matter this morning, I think, and say, wait a minute, what are we talking about? We're talking about immigrants. That's what it's all about. And where those immigrants come from. And what their history is and all this. Okay. And what they do when they get where they're going. All right? All right. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. So this is the most important thing. And so I just pointed out, you know, the history of one immigrant, very prominent, all over the world. And I talked about some other immigrants, people, by the millions, who weren't voluntary immigrants. Okay. Well, let's leave it right there until with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. Today's discussion is surrounding lying in the system of racism and white supremacy. We do 
um, invite your calls. one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six is the number you can call to get in contact with me or the show. Uh, you can also do it by going to our Gmail, 7, the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. You can also view and hear the show on YouTube. Just t- go to YouTube, type in Talktainment, then hit the space bar and type in the word radio. Scroll down to Talktainment number 2 live on YouTube, and you are there. And while you are there, hit the uh, subscribe button. And also the like button, and you're there. And one more way, facebook.com forward slash talktainment to listen to the entire show if you'd want to, if you'd like to, in review. Brian Gaston, Eric Williams, B.W. Gifts, Helen Nance, Don Michener are just a few of our loyal and reoccurring sponsors to the uh, program. So I want to give a shout out, shout out to that. And if you'd like to donate, you can also do that also. Uh, Mr. Fuller, going back into this uh, line. Now, since we are in a prison system that you often refer to, and in particular the movie The Shawshank Redemption, as a warden of the prison, does the warden have the right to do or say anything that he or she wants to and in particular, do they determine the policy of the prison? Absolutely. If it's a dictatorship type warden and in the system of white supremacy, that's what that is because the prison itself is illegitimate. So, you know, if you're in a concentration camp in a war of an illegitimate government and you're the prisoner of that illegitimate government, the government of white supremacy I'm talking about, if it's a white supremacist government, and according to logic and the evidence, that's the most powerful government on the planet Earth, anybody who's a prisoner of that government is a prisoner of an illegitimate government because there should be no such thing as the system of white supremacy as a world government. But there is. It's the most powerful government in recorded history. As of 2018, there is no government more powerful than the system of white supremacy among the people of what we call the planet Earth. So therefore, that government, you look at it and say, is that a legal government? Is that a legitimate government? Is that a constructive government? The answer is no. Why? Because it's designed to do what? Mistreat people, dominate and mistreat people based on color, worldwide. Anybody with color in his or her skin is eligible to be dominated and mistreated by anybody who is classified as white. Yes. If you're classified as non-white under that government, you are also classified as a prisoner of war, Mm -hmm. not someone who's, you know, going to be captive or might have been captured and got away. Mm-hmm. No. In 2018, if you're a person of color on the planet Earth, you're already a prisoner of war. You were born into a prison called the System of White Supremacy. That's the official name, okay. or the unofficial name, okay. the title All right. of that prison. All righty. Let's take a call here. What line are we on? Line number one? Okay, line number one, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. How are you doing, sir? Mr. Yes, sir. Fuller, how are you doing this morning? Still learning. All right. My name is George. George, all right. Yes, sir. Um, do you believe in the uh, essence of karma? If something happened to someone, uh, do you need to pay for it? Do you believe that the nature of the universe? Do you believe that it's going to happen regardless? Or what's your take on that? Uh, do I believe in what? Do you believe in karma? You believe that it's kind of happened to everyone? Yeah. Whether they've heard of karma, I never they really looked it up in a dictionary. And well, the old saying is that it comes around both of them. Of what it might be, but what, 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 uh, so well, see, in my lifetime, do, right? go ahead. In my lifetime, I've noticed that whatever I've done, I've had to pay for it. And I, and I'm starting to, I don't know if it's because I believe it or just because of the way of the universe, I don't know. 
but I know in the religion of white supremacy, how uh, blacks have been treated, and it's been going on for years, and, you know, that supreme race has been dominating and mistreating, but nothing seems to have turned. So I don't know why is it one way, and, you know, why is it that it's not happening, but if I go out and do something, everything I've done, I pay for it. So is this because probably I believe in it? Or what's the, I don't know, is it universe law? I don't know, I'm kind of confused. But I've never seen nothing happen to the white supremacy. Now, there's a few, and some less that stuff happens to them. But overall, the race and how they are, that seems to not the table, not really like it's going to turn anytime kind of soon. Okay, well, the, in the title of my book, the word compensation is there. All right? Which means. Yeah. You know, sometimes people say you reap what you sow, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, uh, and, you know, if you put uh, wheat, if you plant wheat out there on the ground, uh, you're going to get wheat. I mean, you know, you're not going to get apples and oranges. So whatever you put out is what you get back. Now, following that line of thinking, uh, if you put out a lot of evil and whatnot, evil is what you're going to get back. I mean, it's going to make a full circle. Uh, some people call it boom, the boomerang effect. Uh, I call it, the law, you I call it the law of compensation. You might call it karma. I call it the law of compensation. All right? My grandmother told me you reap what you sow. But in yes, religion, yes, yes. So, so, so uh, yes, I follow that line of thinking because I'm saying the white supremacists, what they are doing is, is non-constructive, very destructive. They are smart enough to do constructive things, but they and they do constructive things. But they do just as many non-constructive things as they do constructive things. We're trying to get rid of the non-constructive things. You know. You know that's your question. Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. I was going to ask you a quick question. If you're smart enough to out. Is it true that, I don't know, the way it's looking like, you can be karma, you can be compensation if you're smart enough. That's what it looked like the white supremacists are doing. I don't know. I don't know how the law of the universe works. I know if I do something, I ain't prepared for it. I don't know if because I'm not smart enough to know. And, and in answer to the question, see, not everything happens at once. Sometimes people do things and something happens as a result of it right away, within the next 15 minutes. All right? A person yeah. robbed somebody. And then the person who did the robbing and killed somebody in that robbery is dead 15 minutes later because he didn't get away. All right? I mean, you know, 15 minutes later. I mean, he just killed someone in a robbery. I mean, took their money, shot him in the head, ran down the street, and then somebody who was more powerful than that person who did the robbery came after the person that did the robbery there was an exchange of gunfire, and that person who committed a robbery, a serious crime, who did something that should not have been done, 15 minutes ago, 15 minutes later, is now dead him or herself. That was a quick payoff. Now, not everybody gets paid off, you know, in that kind of timeline. See, that is it. It, it happens, but it only happens when it's supposed to happen. All right? According to what? According, maybe, to this thing that you call karma. Now, I say that the reason the victims of racism are still victims of racism after all of this time is because we haven't been attending the business. The victims of racism has not made ending racism and replacing it with justice a priority. And all the evidence shows that. The non-white people, the black people of this planet, more than anybody, like to shy away from even discussing racism. And that should be the reason that we do everything, is try to get rid of racism and replace it with a better system. Why? Because it dominates everything that we do. And we have turned out to be some of the most messed up people in the history of the world because of it. Because it's toxic. It's a poisonous system. And the very thing that is poisonous, poisoning us, we try to ignore it. 
as best we possibly can. And that's a slap in the face of the creator of this universe, who, in my way of thinking, believes in the law of compensation. That if something is evil, and you are aware that it is evil, and you can go around trying to party and whatnot and try to act like you're not in an evil system, and anytime somebody tries to tell you, why don't you do something about this evil system? No, we got to party. We got to, it's party time. I don't have time to think about that stuff. Let's tell the truth now. Many, many, many. We got every kind of priority of the black people of this planet. Think that way. We can find everything to do except take care of the business, probably, and I, in my way of thinking, and this is just my opinion, taking care of the assignment that we're supposed to be taking care of. And as long as we are doing that, we are going to pay the price of doing it. Ignoring or trying to find a way to ignore and, and say to ourselves that it ain't happening, or even if it is happening, I don't have time to be bothered with it. I got other things to do. No, you don't have time to be bothered with trying to get on a boat out of an angry ocean. I mean, you don't have time to try to save yourself from terrible conditions and the generations that come after you because you would rather have a party. See what I mean? We got this party mentality about everything. I can understand it because for so long, we weren't allowed to have a party about nothing. I can understand it. It's understandable, but it's also understandable that, hey, you get in a position where you can start solving problems rather than making problems. Why not choose to do that for a change? And that's where we are now. Yes. And in answer to your question, yeah, we haven't been compensated. Compensation meaning you replace what is with something that's better. What is is a system of white supremacy. You replace it with something better. What is that something better? The system of justice, which means guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that no person, white, non-white, male, female, old, young, no person is mistreated at any time for any reason and that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help. All that right. is what we are supposed to be working on 24-7 and not paying any attention to anything until that gets done. And the reason, in direct answer to your question, <clears throat> in my way of thinking, the creator of the universe is saying, okay, you all just keep playing around so you won't keep moaning and groaning about your condition because you like to play too much. We you seem to be taking care of business. That doesn't say that we shouldn't have laughs, that we shouldn't, you know, that we should walk around being sad and grown face all the time. Some people think that that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you can enjoy doing constructive things just as you can enjoy doing non-constructive things. But we have been brainwashed by the white supremacists to think that if you're black and you're doing something that makes sense, there's something wrong with you. Yes. You're crazy. All because right. if you're a black person, you're supposed to be doing something stupid all the mm-hmm. time. Okay. You're listening to TalkTamedRadio.com, the compensatory concept on TalkTamedRadio.com. That is radio the way it should be heard. And all you have to do is download the TalkTamedRadio.com app to your cell or to your tablet. And you can hear, <clears throat> excuse me, and you can hear all of the uh, programs on TalkTamedRadio.com, radio the way it should be heard. I am Mr. Bobby, the co-host of The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., who you've been listening to and answering your phone calls and getting ready to do a Gmail here. But before we do that, this is important. Mr. Fuller, this is the time that we dedicate for your book, so take it away. Well, you can get the book uh, that will cover a great deal of the things that I've been saying. Uh, a Confessatory Counter-Racist Code, the United Independent Confessatory Code System Concept, which is what I say that we need to solve this problem. We need a code of behavior that's addressed to the individual person, and that's what I've tried to do with the basic book and the additional 
volume that goes with the basic book. There's supposed to be one book, but I couldn't get it all crammed into one book. And so there's two volumes to it. But most people get the basic book, which is adequate, uh, even if you have the older book. So, you know, some people might get the notion of what Fuller's doing is just doing what a lot of hustlers do, just trying to sell some books. No, I didn't start out to sell, be a bookseller. I started out to try to convey an idea, okay? And I just had to put it in a book because I figured that was the best way. But you can get the book by going to ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com. And the book is addressed to the individual person. As I say, if you solve the problems of each individual person, it's all about two words, problem solving. If you solve the problems of each individual person, you solve the problems of all people. That's the equation, which I think, you know, theoretically, I think that would work. Okay. We don't have that code. Hmm. We don't have a code. We don't have a code that's addressed to the individual. Each individual has a different type of problem. Right. Okay. All right. All right. So if you solve that person's problem, and you solve the problem of every individual, you solve the problems of everybody. And that's what we need. Something we can do and do real fast. See, not something that's going to be a long, drawn-out struggle. We can solve this problem called racism with that overnight if we have a code. Yes, if we have a code. Okay, uh, let's take... ProduceJustice.com. Produce That's just, how you put it. Okay, ProduceJustice.com. What line are we What line are we on? Line number one? Okay, line number one, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. Uh, good morning, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. I just have two yes or no questions. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, one, Sister Kelly, uh, Okay. Would you have to be smarter than a person... Uh, that you are dominating or mistreated. If you're what now? Would you have to be smarter than the person that you are dominating and mistreating? You have to be as smart, smart enough. See, now, when you say smart, that means how smart? Smart enough to do what needs to be done. Nobody knows everything. Uh, the, the, the smartest person in the world doesn't know everything. The fact that the smartest person in the world gets old and dies when they are not ready to get old and die. That proves they don't know everything, all right? In fact, the smartest person in the world will have seen evidence of this. If they stay here long enough, they become the dumbest person in the world. All they got to do is keep getting up in the morning and going to bed at night. The smartest person on this planet right now will come, will arrive at a point where that person doesn't know a spoon from a fork. We've seen evidence of that. Okay. What is your okay. second question, sir? Oh, well, I was just going to ask, would, would, uh, would becoming smarter than that person precede the domination and mistreatment, which means, I mean, would it come before the domination and mistreatment? Well, it would have to be smarter uh, before. Yeah, yeah you're, you're just... See, smart just means learning to do what you have to do at the time that you have to do it, you know. Uh, that, that's, that's what smart means, uh, problem solving. You know, usually we associate a smart person with a person who can solve problems. You know, everybody can make problems. That's easy to do. And we make a lot of problems out of what? Ignorance. All right? And so we wind up in a lot of trouble that we didn't really want to have. Why? Because we didn't know how to not be out of trouble. Okay? Nobody likes trouble as a rule. Uh, you know, and people that do really, really lost their minds. I mean, if they want, you know, they're seeking to be in a painful condition, make their condition worse than it is. Nobody wants that, normally speaking. So it's just a matter of knowing how to solve whatever problem that you come in contact with. And that's why we, I say that we need a code. See, no one is born smart. You become smart by learning how to do what? Look at the things around you and figure out the best thing to do in every circumstance. That's why I say we need a code for doing that so that you don't have to do a lot of last-minute thinking. You can say, oh, when this happens and this happens, the best thing to do is this, this, and this. And if there's something to be said, you say, oh, when a person says this to you, 
what is the best possible thing to say? I mean, for the next 10 million years, what is the best possible thing to say at that moment? And what you want to do is learn that best possible thing, the best thing that you can possibly say that will have the greatest effect in the most constructive way. And so, because everything is about doing and saying. So if you know what to do under every circumstance and what not to do under every circumstance and what to say under every circumstance and what not to say under every circumstance, now you have become very, 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 very smart. So the white supremacists, see, they, they don't run away from knowledge. Mm. They don't mind telling you what they don't know. All right? Because when you tell people what you don't know, and people are willing to tell you what you don't know, then you learn. I often give the illustration, a person walking into a room, and you can walk into a room, and that person walks into a room and says, I'm the dumbest person in here. All right? Because there's ten people in the room. And you walk in, and you say, I'm the dumbest person in this room. I don't know nothing about nothing. I need somebody to tell me everything. Now, you're not exposing yourself, I mean, as being some type of, you know, uh, person that shouldn't exist or anything like that. You're actually helping yourself. They're calling them people and say, oh, you can explain the room? Well, I'm one of the smartest people in the world. Okay? Now, there's ten people in there who say that. Now, what's going to happen if you're willing to listen to those ten people? who say that they're the smartest person in the world, each one of them. When you walk out of that room, after having talked to all ten of those people, the math, the mathematics, the logic says what? You are going to be smarter than all ten of those people put together. Wow. We have to learn that principle. Yes, sir. Well, we got to hold it there until the second hour. Uh, TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio, and radio the way it should be heard. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on the second hour. Thank you. Thanks for listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Filler. Heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. The most important question in all racial matters is why one should always ask it. Radio, the way it should be heard. You've got the power. The world's greatest radio. TalkTainmentRadio.com TalkTainment Radio, worldwide sound. TalkTainmentRadio.com We give you a reason to come. The world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guest and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, the management, the staff, or k e World Network, LLC. Live call-in talk show. Dial one 932 9766 and join the conversation here on TalkTamerRadio.com. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTamerRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio the way it should be heard. And now... Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. All right. Welcome to the second hour of the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby. We go where you go, and all you have to do is download the TalkTainmentRadio.com app to your cell and to your tablet. On the world's greatest radio, TalkTainmentRadio.com, the way that radio should be heard. We are speaking with uh, Mr. Fuller, and today's uh, subject is lying, lying, lies in the system of racism and white supremacy. If you missed the first hour, you can go back and hear it. In particular, all you have to do is go to 
uh, facebook.com forward slash talk and you can hear the entire program that first hour and this hour you can also get in contact with the show by calling 1-877-932-9766 you can gmail me at the numeral 7 Mr. Bobby B-O-B-B-Y at gmail.com and you can also go to Facebook or rather YouTube Type in the word talktainment, then hit the space bar, type in the word radio, scroll down to talktainment number two live on YouTube, and you are there. Hit the like button and the subscribe button, and man, you are all in. You are all in. We've been, oh yeah, let me say this. Uh, thank you for some of our sponsors, Brian Gaston, these are reoccurring sponsors, Eric Williams. B.W. Gifts down here in Houston, Texas. Thank you, Brother Bartholomew. Uh, Helen Nance, Don Mitchner, and LaShawn King. Thank you. These are some of our loyal listeners. And if you would like to become a loyal listener, just send in your donations, and they will give me the information, and I will read your name across the air. A lot of people like that, but we do thank you for that because of your donations we're able to do this second hour. Again, we're discussing ly uh, lying, and M Mr. Fuller, in the first hour, uh, we were talking about some words that the President uh, Trump said in a meeting in the White House. Now, some people use the term allegedly said. I, I heard the man say the words on T. I I mean, say the words on TV, so I don't know how that alleged comes in there, but that's a another story. Maybe I have to look up the word, what does alleged mean? But there were seven other people in the room that heard him, uh, or that claimed they heard him say that, although two of these seven said that they didn't hear anything, and one said that he expressed his thoughts to the president uh, privately. Dick Durbin, though, a senator, I believe, from Illinois, came out and said that he actually said those words and and went explicit uh, with that. Now, I'm not going to say the words on TV. We're not sure on radio. I'm not sure, or now we're on TV. I'm not sure if I can say those words, but he called uh, Haiti and African uh, nations uh, S-holes. And uh, this has brought in a lot of uh, controversy uh, with that, and you did address that. And I was going to ask you a question about a word uh, that you used in the first hour, which was illegitimate. But before we go to that word, let's take this phone call. What line am I on here? Number one? Okay. Line number one, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead. Uh, yes, good morning, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. Uh, Mr. Fuller, as far as lying, is it possible that uh, the so-called account or story of the child uh, in the Bible, uh, the immigrant, is it is it possible that in the activity of religion this could be something that we have been lied to uh, over the years believing uh, that there was a Jesus that he was an immigrant that uh, he was born in a manger under s hole type circumstances is it possible that this is part of the white supremacy to have people to believe that well, if a white supremacist has anything to do with anything, it's always for one purpose. That is to strengthen the system of white supremacy. Now, the white supremacists, we're talking about, you know, lying and deception. They are the master deceivers. When it comes to lying and deceiving people from fooling people, nobody beats them at doing that. That's why they were able to take over the whole world and of non-white people because they'll say anything. They'll say anything. They'll, they'll say that, you know, you can look at them standing on a mountain and you'll say, sir, you're standing on a mountain or you're standing on my foot. And they'll say, foot, I'm not standing on your foot. I'm not even standing. I'm not even here. You're making that up. And you're, you're feeling the person standing on your foot. And the person is standing on your foot, and you're looking at the person. But the white supremacist will say anything. I want everybody to understand that. It's nothing that they won't say. 
they make up stories right off the top of their head. I mean, I mean, you know, and, and then five minutes later say they never heard the story, if that will work for them. See, they only does, they will only, a white supremacist will only do what works. That, that makes them different from a whole lot of people, particularly black people. The white supremacists don't do nothing. It won't work. I mean, you know, they, they'll try something, and if it doesn't work, they give them power and make them stronger. You know, they think things through. They're the greatest thinkers on, on the planet. All right? They think things through. They think about what the effect is going to be, what the end is going to be before they even start. They say, now, wait a minute. How is this going to work out? Something that black people haven't learned to do. We'll start doing something without even, you know, no one having any idea of how it's going to all work out. Okay, That's why sure, we do little sure. petty robberies and all like that. I mean, you know, we don't have any, you know, we, we plan getting out of prison without figuring out how, like, Andy the Frame did in Shawshank Redemption, Andy the Frame not only figured out how to get out of prison, he figured how he was going to stay out, all right, never come back, and have plenty of money, and he did. Okay? He thought everything through. Not some things. See, but they say that a Negro doesn't think about anything except just what they can see at the moment. We're not great planners. Mm -hmm. All right? We just say, you know, fate will take care of it. Or, you know, or, or some mysterious force up there in the sky will take care of it. And we just, you know, put on blinders and just run down the middle of the highway with a blindfold on. I mean, and the highway's got speed and cars. They say that's the way a black person thinks. Mm, not good. And they just think everything will all work out. Mm -hmm. And cars hitting them right and left, tearing them apart, throwing them up in there. All right? What's your so, second question, sir? Yes, I basically just want to reinforce what I asked as a question. So is it possible, Mr. Fuller, is it possible that the system of white supremacy and white supremacists are okay with people, especially people, non-white people, going to church and worshiping Jesus Christ. Is that okay with them? Do you think? Well, apparently it is because the white supremacists, see, the white supremacists do not allow black people to do anything that's going to lead to anything that makes sense. Thank you very much. Well, and when I say makes sense, I mean getting out of the power of white supremacists. You can do anything as long as it's not a threat to the business of white supremacy. See, I mean, they are, they are mobsters. They're gangsters. The white supremacists are gangsters. They operate on a gangster principle. principle. And sophisticated mob, the sophisticated mob looks at every situation and says, is it bad for business or does it harm business? If it, yeah. Like, Tom and Rod said in The Godfather, he said, hey, you know, a guy got killed, a friend of mine. But I let it go because it had nothing to do with business. See, they stick to business, all right? He said, if it was going to hurt business, I'd be making a big deal out of it, Michael. He told Michael Corleone, he said, I would be making a big deal out of it. But it, wasn't have, it didn't have anything to do with business. He was a friend of mine, so I let it go because it had nothing to do with business. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. See, and that's why the white supremacists are. Mm -hmm. about everything. They say, hey, does this hurt or does it help the business of white supremacy? And if they look at anything that black people are doing, if they look at what I'm doing, they say, well, I've heard about this fellow Fuller. What, what is it about him? And they say, well, he's doing a whole lot of talking, but so far, I mean, we check, and it's not making any effect on the business of white supremacy. He's speaking against white supremacy all the time. We let him do that. I mean, you know, but it's not having any effect. So, so what? Who cares? Let him talk. He'll just die and wither away like all the rest of them black people that have come down the pike doing all that talking. Who cares? Hmm. It's not bad for business. Yes. We're still in business and getting stronger. All righty. From the Gmail line, uh, Brother J.R., Speaking of lies in the 
system of racism and white supremacy wrote this. He says, first of all, greetings to you, Mr. Fuller. He said, in my opinion, and this is under VGQ, within the system of racism, which is white supremacy, lies are accepted as truth, and truth is perceived as lies, unless white mommy or white daddy says otherwise. Hmm, interesting. All righty, uh, let's see here. Let's see what this question is. Get it up here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fuller, this comes from uh, Brother Thompson. He says, isn't the code really for dealing with white supremacy and not destroying white supremacy? Say that again. He says, Mr. Fuller, isn't the code really for dealing white supremacy and not destroying white supremacy? It's supposed to be putting white supremacy completely out of business. That's why I wrote it. I, I, you know, in other words, I always tell people I'm not trying to make a contribution. I'm trying to actually solve the race problem. Now that's a huge, that's a huge order. See, a lot of people say that. Well, I'm gonna write a book, or I'm gonna make speeches, or I'm gonna make a contribution to our struggle. That's kind of open-ended. I'm not looking for an open-ended. Uh, 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 situation. Yes, We've sir. had open-ended situations. I'm saying, in my way of thinking, anybody who starts out now should be thinking about ending the entire race problem, period. All of it. Not picking at it and trying to make things what you call better within the prison system. No. Eliminate this prison system. It never should have existed in the first place. And everything that I write, I write with the intention of having that in mind and to do it swiftly. So this idea of, you know, the long drawn out struggle, I mean, and passing on, uh, something that I started hearing when I was a little boy, mm -hmm. you know, about, well, what, the children, the next generation of black people, I mean, you know, we got to teach them to take care of it. That next generation thing. I say, no, let's, wait a minute. This generation, this generation, this generation. What do you mean by this generation, fellow? I mean, you're breathing, aren't you? You solve this problem and solve it in 15 minutes. That should be the attitude. Everybody on the planet right now. Hey, I'm going to try to come up with a code or a procedure or something that will solve this so-called uh, thousands of years race problem in 15 minutes. Okay. All right. That should be our attitude here in 2018. Not just passing something on to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. We should say that, that that's, that's pure nonsense. Just because something has been around like forever doesn't say you can't take it apart in 10 minutes. That's been proven in science. You can take forever to put up a big building. I mean, uh, you know, years, dozens of years, 20, 30 years to put up a building. That same building can come down in 15 minutes, but you have to know how, to, how it's put together. Yes, sir. Let's go to the phone lines. What line are we on? Line number one? Was that one? I couldn't see. Okay. Okay, line number one, yes. you're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning. Still learning. I want to ask uh, Mr. Fuller to explain <clears throat> the principle of we all are calming again for everybody that's listening. Because uh, it seems to me members of the conscious community or members of the, the leading members of the black community, especially the males, for example, there's a few going on right now with Dr. Umar Johnson, Tariq Rashid, Brass Watkins. It seems to me the male leaders of the, of the black community tend to get caught up in this ego thing, like who's torment, who did this. Uh, you know, if, if you believe in Christianity, you're now considered a Tom. If you're doing this, you are. You know, if you, if you believe that uh, all white people aren't white supremacists, you're considered a Tom, stuff like that. So I would like Mr. Fuller to explain to us again what it means that we're, how, how we all are Tom in oh, the system of white supremacy. Oh, okay, Mr. Fuller? All prisoners of war are equal. See, I mean, walking around in the prison yard talking about who is the uh, head, you know, I'm the toughest guy in the cell block. Yeah, right. 
big deal. Big deal. You're the toughest guy in the cell block. What does that mean? You're in the cell block. If you're all that tough, what are you doing in the cell block? Stop and think. Be like under the frame. No. I ain't tough at all. Why? Because I'm in prison, that's why. Whoever put me in prison is tough. Now, that's a tough dude. And that's a tough system. Now, if I'm all that bad, beat the system that put me in here <coughs> by me not being in here. How about them apples? Ain't no such thing as a tough guy that's locked up. There's no such thing as a tough dude who's locked up. The person that locked him up is tough. See, our thinking is way off. Way, way off. And comparing one prisoner to another, the white supremacists laugh at that. They say, oh, they're, down, they're all down there comparing themselves in our, in the, in the hole of our slave ship. All them Negroes down there in the bottom of the hole saying, my chains are shinier than yours. Look, I got some pretty chains on. Yours is all rusty. I'm better than you. That's black people. Right here in 2018. The code says, stop that. Stop it right now. Stop comparing yourself with some other black person. Compare yourself with the people who have you in chains. Compare yourself with the smartest white supremacists that ever lived. Compare yourself with that person and nobody else. Yes, sir. Because that's the person who's causing the problems. All right. So you don't compare yourself with anybody else ever. Ever. Okay. Stop looking at other black people and what they're doing. Why ain't you doing this? Well, why haven't you solved the race problem? Well, anybody can play that game. You can turn around around and say, well, you know, you're saying, why didn't I do this and why didn't I do that? Well, you're doing all this talking. Why haven't you solved the race problem? How about that? If you just want to have an argument, you can have an argument about anything with anybody. Get out of that habit. Black people comparing each other with each other. And that's no comparison. You don't even start making that comparison. You never do that. Never compare yourself with any other black person that ever existed. Period. Wow. Why? Because all black people came under the white supremacists. Compare yourself with a white supremacist and the smartest white supremacist at that. Look at where you are and look at where he or she is and don't compare yourself with nothing else. That's, that is a rock-solid part of the code. That's all we've got to start doing, just making that comparison. Just right. Stop these arguments about, you know, what black person's chains are shinier than the other. Mm. And, and, and who, who is smarter? Who's the smartest guy in the, sm in the cell block? Mm -hmm. okay. All black people are in prison. So ain't nobody smart. Ain't nobody smart. Look that in your head. Okay. Talk nobody who is black is smart. Smart compared to whom? The white supremacists. That's who. All righty. TalkTamingRadio.com is a 24-7, no-charge, worldwide broadcasting facility with hosts delivering on various topics such as news, lifestyle, sports, Law, health, wellness, religion, and politics. Now, here's two I'd like to share with you. One, Pastor O speaks, and it's your time to travel. Now, these shows are exclusive to TalkTainmentRadio.com. Good information, everything that you would want to do, there's something for you. All you have to do is go to the TalkTainmentRadio.com homepage and click on Programs. And trust me, there are things there that are specifically designed for whatever you want. That comes from TalkTainmentRadio.com, radio the way it should be heard. Now, I'm the co-host of The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Nelly Fuller, Jr. here on TalkTainmentRadio.com. And if you would like to get in contact with the show, you may do so by calling 1-877-932-9766. If you would like to hear a repeat of today's program and all other programs, as a matter of fact, of the compensatory concept, all you have to go to is facebook.com 
forward slash talktainment and you're there. Just click it on and you can listen to the entire program to go over some things Mr. Fuller has mentioned for your clarity. You can also uh, dial one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six seven mister Bobby is the Gmail. Seven Mr. Bobby B O B B Y at Gmail dot com. You can do that, which some have done, and you can also do this. You can go to face or you can go to I did it again. You can go to YouTube and then click in talk tainment. Then hit that space bar and type in radio. Scroll it down to talk tainment number two live on YouTube and you're there. And while you are there, hit the uh like button and subscribe button. And you're, you can go. Okay, now, Mr. Fuller, you mentioned in the first hour this word, since we were speaking of immigrants, and you used the word illegitimate. And you said that uh, one thing that we must do as we learn uh, compensatory uh, logic and, and codes and words and things like that, in the word guide that you have uh, written, with his, which is an expansion of the basic book, I've heard you say many times, on page 164, you gave a definition of the of uh, illegitimate, so that we can be clear. Uh, could you uh, go over that, please? Page one, what? 64, 164 of, of, the yeah, word guide. of the word guide. At the bottom, you, you t spoke to illegitimate, so that we can be clear as to what we're doing and what we're thinking. Okay, what I say there is use this word illegitimate with caution. Study the ways that others use it. And then I have a, a number of questions that follows that. Uh, that codified instruction. Yes. To use this word with caution. When you say illegitimate, use it with caution. And now you have some questions about what is illegitimate. Yes. What is an illegitimate child? Is any child of any person illegitimate? During the existence of white supremacy, are the non-white people of the known universe the illegitimate children of the white supremacists? These are all just questions now. Yes. I didn't get any answers. Is white supremacy an illegitimate form of government? In my opinion, it is. But that's just my opinion. Are the white supremacists, racist man and racist woman, illegitimate governors of the non-white people of the known universe? Are they illegitimate governors? In my opinion, the answer is yes. But that's just my opinion. And according to compensatory logic, that which is illegitimate may be that which is correct. And that which is legitimate may be that which is not correct. What does that or mean? incorrect. All right? Depending on what you want to say <laughs> is the definition of the word illegitimate. See what I mean? There are people who will say that Jesus was illegitimate. Okay? <laughs> and there are other people who say, oh, no, 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 don't say that. But in the eyes of some people at that time that he was born, they said, you know, well, the father said that it wasn't his baby. That was the father's name was Joseph, you know, a, a, a male child born of woman. But they say, yeah, but you got a greater father than Joseph. And they say, yeah, but we don't have no evidence of that. So that baby is illegitimate. And uh, that family ain't much of nothing, really. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that was the attitude of a lot of people at that time. Okay. And the attitude toward that illegitimate baby, I mean, proved to be, hey, he ain't no Roman emperor. He ain't much of nothing. He's just a jack leg preacher around here, you know. And I understand that what some people have told me, that he had a bunch of followers, and when the going got hot, some of those followers said, I don't even know the dude. I mean, he's around here doing all this talking and whatnot. I used to hang around him for a while, but I don't know it. All right. And so they, what, you know, a lot of people have told me down through the years the same story over and over again, whether it's true or false, I don't know. But that's the story I've heard. And uh, so finally they hung him. You know, a whole lot of people didn't like him and didn't care nothing about him being hung. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of people crowding around saying, hey, we're going to let this happen. 
just like when they lynch black people. Hey, we ain't, you know, not a whole lot of people around there saying we ain't going to let this happen. I mean, everybody backs away. I don't know it, you know. I mean, you know, it's a terrible thing. And that's something else the white supremacists do. I want to interject this. They're real good at taking both sides of every argument. I've been trying to, you know, I've been forgetting to put that out here uh, periodically. Yes, I... I because that... here in 2018, the white supremacists are getting better and better at taking all sides of every argument. Yes, I, I think in a previous program, you mentioned, I think the word, they take all sides. Yeah, yeah, all sides. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, and, and, do it in, and do it in a heartbeat. Yes, yes. I mean, a stern white supremacist. I mean, he will sit right there and argue against you, and then five minutes later, argue for you. Yeah. Now, what's the result of this? Confusion. You get confused. Yes. All right? But the whole idea is, he or she is still wielding the power. Don't forget that. Yes. Don't forget that. So With does... All the arguments settle down. Mm -hmm. They are still the ones who have the power. I don't care what the argument was about. Okay. It's only the victim that's confused, but they ain't confused at all. Okay. They know exactly what they're doing. Right. Before we go to break, does the warden of the prison, and in this case the prison of a white a white supremacy, have the legitimate or illegitimate uh, right to do anything that they want to do to the people in the prison? Well, they have the illegitimate right if it's an illegitimate prison. If it's a legitimate prison, then it's a legitimate right. But in the system of white supremacy, there is no legitimacy according to what is correct, which should be. I mean, why? Because the system of white supremacy is illegitimate. Ill illegitimate, yes. The okay. entire system, the entire prison system that you call the system of white supremacy is illegitimate. Why? It's not designed to produce a product called justice. Right. That's why. Okay. And anything that has to do with people where you have the absence of justice is illegitimate. Period. All righty. Today's topic is a good one. We've been talking about lying in the system of racism, which is white supremacy. Uh, by way of breaking news, the Department of Homeland Security has announced a six-month extension to the immigrants, I believe, under the DACA plan. Uh, that was, um, as a matter of fact, they came across our screen here, and I picked up that information. I brought that up because Mr. Fuller had mentioned the word immigrants. We need to know or define what immigrants in relation or in regard to what the president has. Now, this is somebody else's words. Allegedly said in that meeting in the White House with those seven people when he referred to Haiti and African nations as, and I still haven't got permission that I could say it or not, but S-hole nations. And Mr. Fuller addressed that in the first hour and mentioned the word immigrants. Okay, now, I set that up to say this, Mr. Fuller, that uh, one of our uh, loyal Gmailers, Mr. Palmer, wrote this. He said, Mr. Bobby, could you ask Mr. Fuller, how do you codify words so you can use your words as tools, as a constructive act to remove racism and replace it with justice? Now, according to the to your book, uh, The Counter-Racist Code Guide, Mr. Fuller, on page uh, 55, uh, you wrote under the word codified, you said, quote, use this word to apply to any and all thought, speech, and action that is designed and intended to produce a specific result that consistently and efficiently satisfies those who speak to produce the result. Use it to apply to a way of getting things done the same way each time it's done. Now, going back to Mr. Palmer's question, how do you codify words, Mr. Fuller? 
Mr. Fuller? Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, how do you, co uh, yeah, how do you codify words? You can change the definition of a word in any language that you speak. Just change the definition. I mean, there's no law that says you can't do that. Just change the definition. So does the def all words are nothing but tools. Tools to do what? To get something done that you want done. So you invent a word. If you've never heard a word before, just make up one. And you say, and, and there are a lot of people who say, you can't just go around making up words. All words are made up in all languages. They're just made up. Where do words come from? All right? People make them up. Make them up in order to do what? To communicate an idea. Something that they want done. That's all it is. Any word. You make it up in order to get something done. To accomplish a task. So you can make up words. Or you can take words that are already made up and change the definition of them. And they say, well, who do you get permission to do that? You give yourself permission to do it. That's what I did with the word guy. I just said, I, I'm, I'm saying that this word means this. Why does it mean that, Fuller? Because I said so. That's what I mean when I use it. Well, uh, yeah, but uh, why would you do that? Because I chose to do it. It serves my purpose. You know? I mean, if I'm going to use it, evidently, I want to serve the purpose that I want it to serve. <coughs> and that's all the word is. It's just a tool. Like a pair of flowers. Yes, sir. Or a saw. Or an axe. Or a hammer. Mm hmm You you just fashion one. Go into the machine shop and say, I'm going to make a hammer. I'm going to make a hammer that will do the type of work that I need doing with the kind of work that I'm going to be doing. And I couldn't find one at the hardware store, so I'm going to make one. Or I'm going to take the one that I have and I'm going to modify it to do what? To do what I want done. And that's all it is. Yes. And everybody right now can do the same thing. Codify everything. Yes. So that you get words so that people have to ask you, what does the word mean? Yes. Or uh, okay. I tell people about a religion in the code book, eclectic pluralism. And I say, that's a religion. Those are words that I made up out of the dictionary. They're in the dictionary. But I put the two together, and then I decided what it would mean. Okay. I have a long list of things that are listed in the code as a religion, a compensatory religion. And it's a religion that's designed to help a person to do what? To find the true religion. Okay. All right? Uh, Electric pluralism. Yeah, like, it's in there. Okay. And people say, well, where did you get that? I say, well, I got the words out of the dictionary, but I made up the definition. Okay. Now... Since you, you've done that, and since you went there on religion, and earlier you spoke about uh, a man that was born over 2,000 years ago uh, in a manger and the situations concerning that, and I believe you mentioned the word uh, uh, or the term Jesus. Uh, in, 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 in doing so, since uh, the... You also mentioned that the, the supremists are the strongest persons in the world and they will say anything at any time lying since we're speaking about lying is it possible that the that the name jesus was not even his name uh being that the racist white supremacists want to keep black people under control so they invented that name uh jesus which was not supposedly his real name, but Yahshua was his real name to keep us under con to keep us under control and the stories that in that are lined up in the same manner of control and domination since they are known to be liars. So the question is, is that the person's name? Well, I'm just saying, could it be that that name Jesus is not the name being that the true name is being kept hidden to continue us in that in that prison, that mental prison that you often speak about of racism, white supremacy. 
Well, it could be, but uh, if, if 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 you play that entire tape back of the first hour uh, of you uh, the recording back, you will find that I did not even use that name. I, I didn't say anything about Jesus. <laughs> I just I mentioned a boy that was born. You did say boy, about. yeah. What? Okay, maybe one of the callers had mentioned that. Yes, mentioned that right. name, name, see, name Jesus. Yes. And and for the reasons that you just named, see, it's controversial. See, that's what happens when people start talking about religion. See, the only religion I'm really familiar with that has really hurt me is the religion of white supremacy. That's the religion that has affected me more than any other religion I have ever even heard about. I have uh, heard about, you know, the Christian religion and, and you know, and call myself that uh, Okay. at one time. Okay. I mean, but, you know... I discovered along the lines that maybe I wasn't qualified to call myself a Christian. Okay. Because people started telling me what you had to do to qualify to be a Christian. A Christian. And I was hearing different arguments, like I still hear. Like you I'm still, still hear. I'm still confused. Yes. What qualifies a person to be a Christian? When is, when is a person really a Christian, and when is a person not a Christian? Okay. Minute by minute, day by day. See what I mean? Yes, sir. And I've never had anybody... Uh, answer that question to my satisfaction because anytime anybody starts talking about it, what I hear is a whole lot of arguments. Yeah, and the next thing I know, people are almost going at each other, hitting each other over the head with the Bible. Yeah, that's not good. And I'm saying I don't want to be a part of nothing like that because I can get a fight anywhere. I don't oh. need to fight nobody about no oh. religion. Okay. All right. All right. I run from any kind of fight about religion. Right, religion. And that religion of white supremacy is one, one religion I definitely want to run from. Or, since I found out that I couldn't run from it because I was trying to do that for years, I got to turn around and grab that religion. Okay. And choke it to death. <laughs> all right? And replace it with a religion that's better. And that religion is yet to be found. Okay. Let's, yeah. go, to, let's go to the phone line. Line number one, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Go ahead, please. How you doing, Mr. Fuller, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Brother Muko from Baltimore? Yes, sir. Where we hold the CCA <clears throat> Compensatory Constructive Action Discussions. Uh, this weekend, we're going to be holding it at 2406 Joy Hill Avenue, where we discuss ways on this man line, white supremacy, racism. Well, my question for Mr. Fuller today is, uh, Mr. Fuller, from my care unit in Baltimore, can you expound on... Um, the briefly on the redefining stage that we are in right now of racism, white supremacy, and how racist man and racist woman always stay codified, even in redefining uh, the refining. I'm sorry, not redefining, but refining of racism, white supremacy. You know, and how that is um, basically the refining uh, period of racism, white supremacy is solely fueled by confusing the non-white people. The white supremacists, the system of white supremacy went through three stages and uh, in order to get to the fourth stage. Establishment, that's getting it started. I don't know when it started. Some people say it started uh, four to six hundred years ago. And other people say, no, it goes back as for as at least 2,000 years ago, all right, that the system of white supremacy uh, was established, okay? And so, but I say that I don't know, because I wasn't there. And so I say, well, the evidence shows that it was established at some time, because we got it now. So everything had a starting point, but it's here now. It's the greatest government, the most powerful government that the world has ever seen called the system of white supremacy. And it's also the most powerful religion that the world has ever experienced. And so the system of white supremacy goes through, presumably, four stages. Establishment, that's getting it started. Maintenance, that's keeping it going once it gets started. Expansion, that's the third stage. And these are listed in the code book, too. Expansion is the third stage, meaning... They expanded it. They, 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 they kept making it supreme by making it grow. All right? 
until they completed that expansion, which they did do by taking on under all of, over all of the non-white people of the planet and making them subject to it. Okay, that was the expansion, the expansion era, where they finally completed it, which they did. It is complete as of 2018. It's, it's been long completed, way before 2018. All right, and the last stage, the fourth stage, is refinement. And refinement just means like putting the finishing touches on it. Like you build a car, you put all the engineering in it and all like that, put the wheels on it and all like that. Now the refinement means you put all the bells and whistles on. I mean, you know, you put the paint job on it, make it look pretty and all like that. Polish it up, uh, do all of that. I mean, fine tune the engine, get under the hood, make sure that, hey, it, it, the engine's running well, but let's just make it a little better, all right? Make it run, you know, we hear a little bit of noise in there. So let's just eliminate all of the noise. See, that's the refinement stage. Well, that's the stage that the white supremacists want to keep it in. Now, some white supremacists right now want to go back to the establishment stage because they say they're they are slipping back, that they're losing their grip. So they got to go back and use, you know, uh, naked violence. Now, they're having an argument amongst themselves, and they always have this argument about whether to stay in the refinement stage or go back to the, let's just put it in their face. Let's call those black people the N-word every day, all day, like we used to. But the refined white supremacists say, no, no, that's too much work. I mean, that makes our job more difficult. I mean, marry them, you know? Get in bed with them, have sex with them, you know, uh, make jokes with them, go on television and just laugh all the time with them, dance like they do, you know, when you see them dancing, you get right out there and dance with them. That's the way to keep these people under your control. Just make sure that they don't get any power, <coughs> give them fancy titles, let them have any kind of title they want, let them pick their title. We don't tell them about titles, you know, we know who's boss anyway. You know, we still got the same boss. We're the boss, all right? But if they want to be called boss, you know, let them be called boss. I mean, put a big plaque on their desk and say, you're the boss. You're black, but you're the boss. You're running everything, all right? How you like that, boy? You're running everything. You are now running everything. You're in charge of everything. You know everything. Not only that, you're the smartest person that ever lived. I mean, you're black. But you're the smartest person that ever lived. There's nobody that's smarter than you. There's nobody that is greater than you. The white supremacists will do that in the retirement stage. They'll tell black people how great they are. You know, you want to build a door now. Yeah, you want to you want to build anything or build a big monument to yourself. I help you build it. How, how tall you want that monument to be? Hey, all you, all you black people, just gather around. Tell me how tall you want that monument to be. I'll build you the tallest monument you ever saw, all right? And I'll say that this is dedicated to you great black people who know everything, who, 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 who rule the world. You rule the world. I mean, you black people rule everything. I mean, ain't nobody got no power but you. All you black people got all the power, all right? And they wink at each other while they're doing that. They say, you know, right. they say, it ain't nothing but a bunch of suckers. We can tell them anything. And all we got to do is put a lot of polish on it and pat them on the head and tell them how great they're doing, and they're good to go. They can be starving to death, but they won't know the difference. They're too dumb for that. <laughs> right. Righty. Well, thank you, Brother Muko. Appreciate your call thank every you week you too. call in, my brother. Okay, and I'll call back next week. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Fuller, at the 45-minute mark, which we have definitely gone past, you need to uh, talk about your book, and um, since we've been doing that today and using it, and also the word guide. Go ahead, please. Yes, you can get the book that I say I wrote it for the individual person. Now, so-called organizations can use it and all like that, whatever that means, whatever the word organization means. Uh, but everybody ultimately is an individual. Everybody has individual problems. <clears throat> and you can get this book that's directed toward the individual victim of racism. If you don't consider yourself subject to racism, it doesn't apply to you. 
So you don't even have to argue about that. Some people have said, racism doesn't bother me. I mean, you know, I do what I want to do. There ain't no white supremacists ever telling me what to do about nothing. I tell them. All right, there are some black people who say that. And I say, well, I haven't seen any evidence of that, but if that's what you believe, I mean, you know, you're entitled to your belief. And you go ahead and keep doing it, and I'll try to learn from you. And, you know, if I can ever figure out what it is that you're doing that's gotten you away from doing, you know, from doing what the white supremacists tell you to do, I really want to study you because you're a very unique black person. In fact, the most unique black person that ever existed in my mind, all right, because I don't see anybody qualified for that who's black. All right, but there are some people who will say that. Well, if you say that, then the book is not for you. The book is for people who consider themselves prisoners of this war between those who believe in racism and those who don't. And I consider myself one of those prisoners. And I wrote a book for the prisoners, the victims of white supremacy. And so you can get it by going to ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. And what's supposed to be in the book it's things that you can do as an individual person every day and things that you can say as an individual person every day that will work in your benefit. Mm -hmm. That's what the book is. If, it do, if, if the passages in these books don't do that, then the book is not for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to help you to solve your individual problems. Now, Whatever they are. Now, it's not written... Whatever you are, if you're classified as non-white. Yes, yes. Now, your book is not written in chronological order, is it? Uh, or can you go in at any point? Well, the books are segmented into uh, nine areas of activity. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. And that just about covers... Some people say that I should add health. But I say... If you have everything working the way it ought to work in those nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, mm -hmm. you got health. Because just on the economics alone, economics is health. If your situation is an economically sound, meaning your whole body and your whole mind, because economics is about time and energy, then you're not healthy anyway. So that, that pertains to health. Health is everything, not just one thing. Health is everything, your environment and everything. It's got to be healthy. You can have, you come in here, you come into the world maybe with a healthy body, but if you inhale and smoke, like they're trying to get everybody back on this, what, opium, marijuana, or whatever, uh, whatnot, I mean, you know, it's got rid of a whole lot of smoke. I mean, from lucky strikes and <laughs> the Marlboro man and all that who died from lung cancer, now they're going to give you some more smoke? And we running out and grabbing it? I mean, it's smoke. You know? I mean, smoke has been known to not be compatible with lungs. Lungs are made for air, fresh air, the freshest you can get. You might as well just go to work in a smoke factory. You know, you have smoke. You know, well, you do nothing but just inhale smoke all day long. I mean, but that's not, that's been proven not to be healthy for the lungs. Yes. Clean air. That's just as an example. But you can get the book by going to producejustice.com. And everything is supposed to be based on logic. If, if Neely Fuller, don't follow Neely Fuller, follow logic. Follow logic. I mean, why? Because don't follow Neely Fuller, why? You know, he's doing the talking. Neil Fuller makes mistakes. Logic will not mislead you. So the book that I'm writing is about following logic, because that's what I try to follow. Anytime I don't follow it, I'm in trouble. Right. But right. I already am. So, uh, again, it doesn't matter at w w one of those areas. It doesn't matter where you start. Is that correct? Well, I've told people, sitting down and reading a book. I mean, you know, it takes a lot of time. Next day in time, everything moves fast. People don't have time to read a book from start to finish. I have advocated that people do sit down sometime when they have a lot of time, and who has that kind of time, to read the book from start to finish. But I say the book is written in such a way, you can just pick it up any time of day and turn to any page, and you might get something that will help you. 
you know, you can just pick any, any segment if you want to, or just turn to any page, including the back pages of the basic book. You just have a bunch of quotations. Okay. Pick out, out any quotation that might help you today. All righty. Right. All These right, well. Quotations all by me, by the way. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fuller. All right, well, you hear the music, you know what that means.